Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Science Gallery. Um, and welcome to the launch of Love Lab, the science of desire. Can you reduce love to an equation? Uh, can you reduce attraction to chemistry? Can you, re you reduce desire to genetics? So we really want to find out what is it that people find attractive in other um, individuals when they meet them for the first time, within the first few milliseconds that they encounter somebody? What are those particular features that we find attractive in them? The lab in the gallery model that we're doing this month where the public come in and there are real experiments going on and um, they can participate in the experiments. I think this is a particularly important and invaluable and uh, valuable model because um, this way people get to actually see what science is and what research is. And not just the finished product but the process. And then um, this is a great example because we're all quite curious about what is it that makes you fall in love with someone. Is it just, is it because you both love uh, the poems of Pablo Neruda or is it because you've got a different MHC, a different immune system? real scientific um, experiments and the data is all going to help us understand um, you know what is the route to attractiveness and um, so we're hoping to be able to publish this. Okay, so my experiment in the science gallery is looking at impulse control, specifically looking at uh, male-female differences, trying to, trying to assess how well men and women can inhibit responding to pictures of attractive male faces and attractive female faces. So there's certain features in a walk which people can find attractive, things like waist to hip ratio, the breadth, the diameter of, of a male walking a strut. What is the ideal ratio? Uh, for a guy it's 0.81. Uh, Wait, hold on. So I got 0.87. And that's the most attractive you can be, is that? Yes, that is the that most is... attractive ratio you can have. Excellent. mixture of three different things, biology, psychology and genetics. That's what love is. I think it's probably a bit from column A and a bit from column B. I don't know what column B is yet though. So the science has a part to play, but I don't think you can boil it all down to that. I don't think you can. It's a nice try. <laughs> if only it were as simple as they tried to explain it here. Science can explain an awful lot of things, but I sincerely hope that it never manages to fully explain the science of love.